All right. Kevin Donahue returns for his third appearance on the podcast. Welcome back. Sorry, I something popped up and I clicked an exit button. Oh, you're good. Um, I honestly might make like a little like mixed drink. Do it. Oh, yeah. Why not? Right back. All right, Kevin, let's do this. <laughs> oh, that introduction was a lot. <laughs> what? It was a lot? What do you mean? It just felt too flattering. I didn't know what to say. 
Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, I get so or I feel like doing like a podcast, it's so weird. You know, like we're just kind of recording us talking and then we're throwing it out there. And then I'm yeah. like introducing you. Then I'm like, you know, I feel weird introducing him because you know he's Kevin. <laughs> like, yeah, no, exactly. That's why. I, that's why I was thrown. I was thrown off. So anyway, I've been. Well, first off, how you doing, man? Aren't you supposed to go to Thailand? Yeah, I'm but I, I, I'm. I'm delaying it just a little bit, but I'm still going. I'm okay. still going. Sweet. Do you already have a flight I, and everything or no? I I kinda got I was I after my flight to and from Moscow, I just was like, I don't want to be on a plane or in an airport again for a hot minute. I just That's, feel like I yeah. had <laughs> bad experience for some reason. I just felt unpleasant. So I was like, I'm gonna wait a second. And I also Have like, you considered oh sorry, go ahead. I also had been away from the gym. Like I was supposed to be working out while in Moscow, but I didn't do that. So oh, I yeah. wanted to have sufficient time at the gym here to get back in that habit. Do you think the gym recording? Oh yeah, we are. Okay, okay. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. Do you think the gym is a form of meditation? Yeah, in a sense, because it's kind of hard to focus on like a lot of different things. You kind of, your awareness is like one pointed because you're focusing on like lifting the, lifting the weights. Mm -hmm. So in a certain sense, I feel like, and I feel like it's also an altered state too. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, like you, you can feel get different. kind of high mm -hmm. working out. And I get like it just it's a lot of work. <laughs> so Yeah. No, and it's weird when you like uh when you're dead left like deadlifting and then you like see flashes of green and you feel like you're gonna pass out because you get so lightheaded. Yep. I yeah, noticed I that light. when I don't listen to music, I feel like way more um kind of in the moment. Which I don't get to listen to music because I'm with my personal trainer and he's talking. So <laughs> I'm kind of just there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So and I wanted to ask I'm you. Gone, every time I've Sorry, gone on my own, I forgot my AirPods too. So I need to stop doing that. Anyway. Yeah, I wanted to ask you a, a few things that I've been thinking about, in, in particular, identity, belief, and language. And that's okay. kind of what I wanted to center the podcast on for today. Obviously, if we go on a tangent, that's fine, too. I don't care. <laughs> it happens. But I wanted to ask you... At least, well, let me give some context because I was thinking about this a few weeks ago about how I was kind of at this bar, my girlfriend, and for some reason I was dancing, but while I was dancing, I was also thinking. And what I was thinking about was that we grow up with beliefs and we don't really change or it's not that we don't change our beliefs we don't choose the beliefs that we have uh while we might choose to selectively listen to certain information we don't actually choose uh out of that information what we end up believing after reading it or listening to it and we're sort of born with a certain set of beliefs, but we don't like choose to believe any of those beliefs. At least that's uh, my thoughts on the matter. And with that being said, 
beliefs also are, let's say you believe that the earth was created by a turtle coming out of the ocean with the earth on its back or something like that, right? Uh, that story is less about the reality of it actually happening. And I think it's more about um, how that has affected you, how that belief has affected the way that you think about reality today and the way that your morals are and the way you interact with the world. And with that said, it forms a deep integral part of your identity. And I wanted to ask you what your thoughts were on what identity is and how that relates to belief. God, I feel like identity is just so, it's like multifaceted in so many ways. So to give a definition of it seems kind of difficult. Um. Well, what's a belief? I, Let's start. Yeah, there. that's what that, that's why I was going to ask. Like, what would you consider a belief? Because, in a sense, I guess a belief is just um something you take as a fact about reality, right? Is that what you would say a description is? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, I believe that my hands are in front of me. I believe that you're the real Kevin uh, talking right. to me on Zoom. Um, or you could believe that you're a good person. You can believe in the Big Bang. You can right. believe in the spaghetti, flying spaghetti monster. Well, I feel like as far as identity goes, it's like the culmination and the meeting point of all of your beliefs. Like coalesced okay. into a body like okay. a physical body because like your identity is like the you that you know of as yourself and all that is is like a collection of beliefs about the world and about yourself and about different things in the world i guess right like this is who i am this is where i'm from this is what i believe yeah and and then all of that manifests into like you you think along the lines of your beliefs and then you act on that. So it is also your behaviors. And so I guess all of those things together would be your identity. But the thing about it is it can it can be sort of like a faulty identity because like a belief about something or reality or yourself is not necessarily a fact. So your identity can be sort of like, I don't want to just say like an illusion, but like your identity could be, ba could be based on unsound things. Like unsound Faulty principles. Beliefs. Right. But so here's... Uh, my follow-up question to that is what constitutes a faulty belief and how do you know or what is fact and what is fiction? And that's tough because to a certain extent, the world will show itself to you in light of your beliefs, like it'll confirm them. There's like multiple different phenomenon that this has been named or studied like the self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. The Pygmalion effect. Pygmalion that? effect. That's the one in psychology. You might've heard about it where they like, they had the teacher. Um, They like randomly assigned three groups of students in a class, the smart kids, the average kids and like the dumb kids, I guess. Yeah. And they told the teacher, like, these are the smart kids in group A. These are the average kids. These are the dumb kids. And throughout the year, the teacher subconsciously treats the students in the different groups differently. And so 
by the end of the semester or whatever, the, the kids in the smart group ended up performing better on their tests than the dumb kids, even though all of the kids were randomly assigned. So the groups that they were in had nothing to do with their actual IQ. But they, the teacher treated them in a way subconsciously that reinforced the teacher's idea of the student's intellect level, I guess. So it's just a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, it's just another way, I guess it's just a different name, a different study for the self-fulfilling prophecy and confirmation bias. That was the third one I was looking for. So to a certain extent, reality shows itself to you based on what you believe. Like if you believe that everyone's evil or like malicious, you will purposefully like seek out information that confirms that and you will ignore facts to the contrary so like how do you decipher fact from fiction it's pretty difficult because like in a sense the perceiver of facts can change what the fact is yeah like the perceived yeah. like you see facts through the perceiver and the facts almost change based on who's perceiving them so, but I guess you could say a faulty belief is one that does not um, reap like positive results for you and other people around you. Okay. That could be a way of saying a faulty belief. Um, I definitely like that definition since it's technically impossible for us to know anything absolutely for certain. Right. Because right. I don't want to say a faulty belief is you having a perception about reality that is not true because who am I or who is anyone else to tell you yeah. that your perception is not true? Yeah, that, no, yeah. I agree. Um, yeah, and then like your, your identity being based off of, at least partially based off your beliefs. Um, the... Uh, the weird thing there is that people will get mad if their beliefs are attacked, but they don't get as mad, say, if the color of your hair is attacked or the shape of your nose. <laughs> right. Well, I feel like we, we have a strong like ego identification to certain beliefs, especially if they're in the lens of like political beliefs or religious beliefs. And even like beliefs about our own character like if our character is attacked we can overreact to that what do you mean by character i guess just like the way you you hold like yourself interact with the world yeah how you interact with the world and even yourself because there's integrity to be had with how you just interact with yourself when you're alone, I would say. It is interesting that we as humans use like the word character, like I'm a good judge of character. Um, like we think of things in terms of a story almost. Yeah. And it's like, he, he's a good character, he's a bad character, protagonist, antagonist. Like what is he in terms of my story? Um. So, like, when people say that they're the star of their own movie, what are your thoughts on that? As far as, like, do you think that's a good belief to hold or do you think that's kind of toxic? That's so weird because I was just watching a video earlier today. Really? And it was this woman talking about how the whole romanticize your life movement is not a healthy one and everyone saying like oh i'm the main character and i only watched like three minutes of it because all of the comments were saying that romanticizing my life has like made my life better like enjoying the small things blah 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 and so they disagreed with the the creator of the youtube videos point i guess but do i think it's a healthy belief to believe you are the main like the character of your own story is that what you said like the main character yeah. well in a sense you are like yeah 
you're you're living you're you're only seeing the world and life through your own eyes and that's your story like yes so you are the main character of your own life but i think i guess where the problem could come in is if if you making that what is the word it if you get confused and start thinking you're like the main character period of not just your life but of like everyone's of lives the, everyone's life yeah if you think you're the main character because the truth is everyone else is also a main character <laughs> in their own life and you're just a side character yeah you can be the main character all you want but you know you're still a side character in everyone else's story yeah right? like you're a supporting role to someone else so i do think I that people today are definitely a lot more selfish than they've been in the past i think people today are like extremely individualistic on a scale that's like hasn't really been seen before in society yeah. and i think a lot of it is just how isolated everyone is from technology and i also feel like it has to do yeah, go i ahead. feel like it has to do with social media and all of that but i also think it has to do with like fear too because i feel like yeah there's so much like fear mongering out like in social media and just media and out in the world and i feel like that causes like a contraction in mm -hmm. in the sense where like your ego feels threatened so you overcompensate by being more individualistic and like trying to serve the ego yeah. Whereas before, like in older times, you had more of a community and there was less fear because there was like your world was so small in a sense where yeah. you, the only information you had about the world really was like through books at a local library and like through the people you directly interacted with. And so, yeah. and you had a strong sense of community. And so there wasn't really a need to be selfish because like the rules of the game were known, like the rules of the game being that you're sort of all in this together. You have to work together, mutual, mutually beneficial relationships. But nowadays it just seems like there's a contraction. Like we all feel like we have to protect something or we could lose it. Yeah. And I think so Humida really like, uh, well, I went on Twitter for a few minutes today at work. Um, and I was, after going on there, I had so much anxiety just because of all the shit that's going on in the world. Yeah. I was just like looking through, I'm like, oh my God, that's happening. That's happening. What, what, what? Ah, yep. And then I just had to turn it off. I'm like, I can't handle this anymore. Because yeah. like my life here yep. is like, fine. There's nothing weird happening where yeah. I'm at. Absolutely Same nothing here. strange. Yeah, like when I open up the internet and see the news page and it's like Russia's doing this and China's planning this and and <laughs> there's this natural disaster that's like killing 20,000 people. Like I'm just like, I don't think the human brain is actually designed to know like, about all that shit. It's not because you, you're, the human brain is designed to like provide you with stress in the present moment to yeah. help you to help you take action on something that is like mm -hmm. a pressing matter in your life it's not yeah. designed to take in like the problems of the whole race or whatever the whole world yeah it's just not designed to do that and that's another thing is like the chronic stress that we all experience all the time <laughs> well it's weird because there's so many people who are on their phones 24 7 and they're in they're in that reality and it's as if they're in this reality where there's all this horrible things happening everywhere and who knows if you're in that kind of reality you might just think it's the apocalypse yeah um well, when for the vast majority of people across the planet uh, life is good and life is peaceful and there's nothing bad happening yeah when my father came and visited me like two weeks ago yeah i feel like 
he spends a lot of time in the reality of the destruction of the world in the sense where he's always mm -hmm. researching and taking in information about all of the malicious things, I guess, that are going on. And it was almost too much because he was telling me all of this and like trying to get me to understand. And I literally had to tell him, I, I was like, dad, like, I understand that this stuff is all happening, but it doesn't really serve me or you at all to, <laughs> yeah. to, to know about it. Like, and what, like, what mm -hmm. action could you take that you would want to take otherwise knowing that Russia is about to <laughs> build another nuke or whatever. Like, yeah. I mean, you could, I guess, build a doomsday shelter. like hut shelter, like, but that's the only act. So if you can't really act on the new knowledge, like if you're powerless to act on it, it's basically useless to know in a sense. Yeah, no, and I agree. Um, well, that that's another thing is that I think knowing that information will make you feel powerless exactly that's how i was feeling i was like what what's even the point of going to the gym <laughs> whatever if 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 rush is gonna nuke everyone in three years or whatever just like some random thing sorry i don't i don't mean to put this all on russia my apologies i'm not rushist <laughs> they're just a, they're just a good example <laughs> no, I, don't, I don't think anyone cares <laughs> um yeah no uh it's kind of like with people feeling powerless i think that's a huge factor in why there's so many crazy people yeah nowadays well, why there's so much depression so much delusions etc et well there can the the media and everyone has been able to convince everyone alive that like <laughs> at least in the u.s that their actions or like their life is the result of like institutions like the institution of race the institution of religion yeah the institution of government and so all of the power is like outside of the individual now mm -hmm. and in a sense like you could say that everyone being overly egotistical and self-centered nowadays might be like a compensation for how powerless people feel like yeah. if you're a woman you're oppressed and you don't have a chance so it's like you become self-centered trying to get that feeling of power back even though it never left they're just convincing you that it's it's gone so then you like gone. overcompensate to reclaim it i feel like yeah like little I man syndrome made, yeah I, I feel like i don't know if that made sense what i'm saying but it just seems like they put all the power outside of you or they convince you it is and so everyone being more self-centered might be like have something to do with trying to reclaim their power well it is the same reason why some people will abuse those who are weaker than them because they can because they feel weak and they want to feel powerful and they feel like they're being trodden down so then they'll abuse other people they'll bully them and uh, there's another thing kind of related to my job at work in that we have these year-end reviews where we have to like self-review ourselves or like re review ourselves and then give ourselves scores based on a certain set of criteria. And the thing is, this is a very common thing at universities. It's a very common thing in companies across the nation and across the Western world. And the thing about self-review is that it forces us, instead of our boss, instead of our manager, instead of our coworkers, it forces us to judge ourselves and by judging ourselves, we kind of have this constant self-critical, self-hating um, orb around us. It's like, um, oh, I should be doing this. I should be doing that. I should be doing this, that, that. And boy, I can't give myself a six. I'm going to have to give myself a five. I'm not that egotistical. Exactly. Right? Because it forces yourself 
to rate yourself lower because it's a lose-lose game. You rate yourself high, you're being too cocky and you're overconfident in your abilities. The only answer is to rate yourself too low if you have any like social awareness. And then when you yeah. rate yourself low, they're like, well, you need to improve. <laughs> so, Or like you might put that pressure on yourself to approve. Well, I think they've it, shown... Yeah. I, I think they've Sorry, shown... Man the effects of self-review and just how like how um um skewed the results are so i don't know why they still use them but you're well, right we, it does yeah hypercritical. we live in a world of self-government you know that's that's what democracy is and with having a self-government there's a literal self-government that forms in the minds of everyone I think. And there's like this, you know, United United States government sitting at the back of your head or, you know, your whatever company you work for sitting at the back of your head. It's kind of has that voice that's telling you, oh, you can't do that. That's illegal. You can't do that. Someone will get mad at you. Yada, yada, <laughs> yada. There's all this. Uh, um, the people in a democracy become their own slave owner basically where yeah. you become a slave of yourself and your own self-criticism and your fears of other people. And, you know, obviously I think democracy is a good thing, but as far as a big critique on democracy in the Western world is that there's like this all seeing eye that exists inside of all of us. My only um, point I was going to make yeah. is because you were talking about America being a democracy. Someone pointed out to me like a while ago that America is actually not a democracy. It's a republic. Yeah, it's a republic. But yeah. I, I don't know like um, if that even changes the point. But I, it was just something that I thought about because a lot of people are like, America is a democracy, but it's it's actually not. But, well, it'd be terrible if it was a democracy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. There'd be Do like, yeah, all the like, it would just be so stupid. There'd be like, uh, because each state, the, the thing about, the thing I like about a government is that each state is equally represented. So, where he's uh, population is all population is represented separately from the state itself, which gives states with say, less. which gives different groups of people a say over the government. So that way the majority doesn't always rule that way. Minority groups don't get shoved to the side, basically. Right. But your point still stands. Cause I feel like the point you were making is like, it almost feels like there's this all seeing eye that's judging everything yeah. we do and there's always this need for like constant approval and under that kind of pressure i feel like any a lot of people give up i watched a video like a couple of years ago and it stuck with me and it was titled i think like the dark side of self-improvement and yeah i i watched that video because i had read like a lot of self-help books not more recently, but like I think early on in college and stuff, or even in high school, you know, I, I feel like a lot of people go through that period of like, you know what, I can change yeah. some things about my life, which is a which is a positive thing. And but you go through this self improvement route, and you realize that like there's no end to it, which obviously mm -hmm. life is a journey and it's always an uphill yeah. thing. So, but it's um. It's just like subconsciously almost everywhere you look, you're sort of told that like where you are right now is not enough. So you need yeah. self-improvement in all of these areas, but there's not an end to it. So it's like this constant like not enoughness. And it does feel like even when I'm alone here and there's literally no one judging me for my actions, like 
if I don't go to the gym that day, I mean, I guess my personal trainer, but what I mean is like, if I stopped yeah. going to the gym and didn't take care of myself, no, no one would really notice. Yeah. Like until I saw, I guess my friends again, if I, um, but I often feel like if when I'm just sitting around, oh, I could be doing more, I could be doing more to like be improving myself in some way or whatever. And then I just like stress myself out. And then I'm like, but for what? Like, I not to say don't improve yourself, but like, I, my happiness at the end of the day is based on all of these like perceptions that society or like perceptions that I have that I about agree. who you should be exactly. Yeah, that's I don't know why I was trying to say it that way, but even what I'm saying is, even when I'm alone it's almost like I have to fulfill all these things or else my life is not enough. And yeah. I feel like it's just, a, it's a toxic, it's a toxic thing. <laughs> well, like as a disclaimer, like, I don't think it's like, in a sense, it's also a good thing. I think because it does push you to improve yourself. But if right. you're stuck in a loop where you're thinking these things, and you're not actually doing anything to improve, then I, I think that's when it becomes an issue. But there's also well, what, I'm, what I what I'm saying though is like self improvement itself is not yeah the issue. It's the there needs to be a balance when you are on yeah. the road, I guess, to self improvement of like accepting yourself as you are right mm -hmm. now. I think I've I said the same exact thing in the first podcast we had. Maybe not. I'm having not deja sure. vu. But just like that balance of like being present and accepting who you are in the moment. Like you're enough right now. However, if you want your experience to improve, there are some steps you can take versus like I'm not enough and I have to I have to like search for this perfect body, perfect house, perfect everything before I allow myself the permission slip of being content. I'm I'm learning that balance, I guess you could say. Well, I guess it's and like I, the reason why you're trying to improve. Like, are you trying to improve because you hate yourself or are you trying to improve because you love yourself? Yeah, that's so true. That's a good point. And that is like such a, that makes such a big difference too. Like, taking actions away from something is different from taking actions towards something like yes. for example like eating healthy because you fear illness is different from eating healthy because you love health it's a very different mindset and one reaps more rewards than the other if that makes sense yeah no that makes sense and um or like if you're trying to make more money because i guess because you want more money rather than i'm afraid that well oh yeah that's a different scenario because if you're afraid that you're gonna be poor <laughs> then i mean i feel like that's like a valid belief if you're like struggling it, it's um, valid so I guess but... it, it kind of blurs with, with that I, one I, it's valid, but when you when you hear about like people who rags to riches, a lot of them talk about how they had to change their money mindset because mm -hmm. they could have been working hard for 10 years and like just fearing being poor and like not having enough. And what that does though is it like it trains you, you use your money in like not incorrectly, but you use your money in a different way when you're making it to avoid being on the streets versus when you're making it to work toward a goal. And so it ends up. Oh yeah. Because you're only going to like make, make the bare minimum if you're trying to avoid something. Right. Or you just, but like if you're trying to make money to avoid being poor, cause you're scared of it, you cling to your money in a way that people who build wealth don't like, yeah. so you don't like when you are, like scared of being on the streets you don't for example open up an investing account and other 
positive money habits that will eventually lead you to wealth over later on. That yeah, was, that's I, the that's same like reason really... why I haven't. No, like I was thinking about opening up an investment account, but I decided not to because I was like, oh, like I feel like I need the money. And I was like, I'm kind of worried that I won't have enough money if I do that. Right. And, and I, <laughs> I recently started like and opened up an investment account. I invested a little bit and it is hard because I do have like a scarcity mindset and yeah. I'm just trying to get over it and not be so reactive. Um, no, same here. But it's hard because like everything in our society is built. Like money is the currency of freedom, as they say. Mm -hmm. You need it for everything. Near everything, unless you want to go build a cabin off in the middle of the woods and like hunt your own food and all of that. Well, money gives so, the illusion of scarcity, I think. Because if there wasn't any money in the world, I feel like people would be like way less stressed out because I because people don't get stressed about not being able to eat. People get yeah. stressed about not being able to pay their bills. That's so you you are right. Scarcity is an illusion created by money. Yeah, because like. Like, this is obviously an oversimplification, but the earth has more than enough of what it has to support every living thing on it. Yes. Like, it literally has more than enough everywhere. Well, but, and if it didn't, then people would die and then there'd be enough again. Right. right? Well, and people, <laughs> it, well, and people are dying, but not because the yeah. earth doesn't have enough, but because yeah. of the, of currency and introducing like ownership over something that technically belongs to everyone. Like, mm -hmm. um, I, I, I love that. Dude, song. Holy oh, shit, God. man. That's like, uh, that's made me like with, with the advent of money, it literally creates room for there to be people that hoard the resources and right. other people who can't get those resources because they have to use money to get resources instead of going and taking them. Right. Exactly. So like so, use the whole. Yeah. Because, because in an ideal world, everyone would realize that there's enough to go around and there wouldn't be this sense of hoarding a need of feeling like you need to hoard it. Yeah. Hoard more afraid. for yourself. And I say that like, I lean like I support capitalism more than I support socialism. Oh yeah, same. The the reason why though is because in an ideal world we would be able to equally share, but yeah. it it would have to come from a place of everyone understanding that there's enough to go around and so the the equal sharing comes about in a natural sense versus like a yeah. a a government toll thing well so long as there's money you can't have socialism and you can't have communism yeah like you can't actually have those things if there's money because those Not things like, would still yeah. be capitalism the only difference is that the government owns a means of production exactly like even in yeah communist governments there's still a, a there's upper still class. money people still use yeah. money to buy things right yeah so it's You'd like that's not but then I think I think about okay, if you got rid of currency like money, well, then we would be back to bartering, right? In a sense. Yeah. But then even that creates a situation where I don't know, there's people that have something that someone else doesn't, but in a sense it feels more equal because everyone has something that another person doesn't have. And so everyone yeah in a sense is valuable because this person over here has the cattle and this person has like the necklaces and then like in a uh, sense, well, everyone is, I don't know. So I would argue that capitalism already creates a system like that where everyone has something that's valuable. 
yeah okay in a system where things need to be traded yeah Yeah. in a system where things need to be traded currency is the best thing well i would say that like civilization can't even exist with this level of population without money without a yeah without a common currency 100 (laughs) percent. yeah because like well and and also uh, i'd say that communism and socialism only work if you're in a small group of like 150 or less yeah well and they've also shown that in the countries where systems like that work the the population is homogeneous so like a lot of people like to mention the scandinavian countries as like oh look how well they're doing with all of these sort of like more socialistic principles but they don't take into account the fact that most of the people in the Scandinavian countries share a similar religion and value system and skin color and culture. And so it's yeah. easy for them to, <clears throat> to agree upon these certain things that they're yeah. willing to sacrifice and in income and stuff for the better good. But when you have such um, a diverse culture and people from various backgrounds like in the US that that system wouldn't work because so many people have different values here yeah like and so for it to work you need to be on the same page and <laughs> like the people of the US are we're not, not on, on the same, same page, page. <laughs> not even in the slightest <laughs> Like, like, no one person is even on the same page. Yeah. Well, and not in anywhere else either, but there's, yeah, more there's a lot less of it here. Yeah. There's, there's at least enough commonality between certain groups of people where they can make that kind of thing work. Um, like they play by the same rules. And it's almost like <laughs> the U.S. people in the U.S like we're not even playing the same game <laughs> if that makes sense all the people are in their own little game it seems yeah and... like those people are crazy those people are crazy those people are crazy but they're all calling me crazy so like <laughs> who's the crazy yeah. one like there's people over here playing monopoly and someone else is playing like go fish and yeah and they're trying to like make rules that apply to both of them and they just don't so with that said, if you don't have a shared, if well, it's like um, a lot of relationships will fail if you don't have some kind of shared value system. <clears throat> um, just like somewhat shared value system that have to be exactly the same, and I think in, in the same sense, a country uh, will have a very hard time. A group of people will have a very hard time if there's a lot of differing value systems at odds with one another. Yep. Um, and also, I think that makes people more easily controlled. Because say, it, if if you have a shared value system within your country, that means that the people are united with one another. And if the people are united with one another, that means that the government can't really control them. Government is less useful for people united. It's yeah. It, it, the government has limited power in that kind of world because, mm-hmm. um, a government is unnecessary in that kind of world. Yeah, or I mean, like it. It's not unnecessary, but it's its reach is far less. Mm-hmm. Um, because the people are able to like govern themselves. Yeah, <laughs> and defend themselves if they mm-hmm. need to. So it definitely... they're, they're all on the same page and they're all like working towards the same goal. And if you're all working towards the same goal, then well, and also you won't right. feel like as powerless if everyone's on your side. Right. right. And I we, think, yeah, it, I really like studying like the history of the U S because I feel like the founding fathers of this country really did have some of the best interests at heart. And it's almost like, how did something so 
like well-intentioned end up so horribly wrong and obviously like there are levels and levels and levels to that and profit and all of that but I, I think it's it's just interesting um do you do you know who henry david thoreau is or um oh, ralph yeah. wald emerson the transcendentalist movement i mm -hmm. i i love those those two um but i think henry david thoreau was correct when he stated that like whenever you get a group of people or organizations it inevitably it always becomes corrupt whether it's a religious organization a government or yeah. even like nonprofits. <clears throat> but well it I, I think everything well it's just what Anita said is that as soon as a new ideal is formed it immediately becomes a retrograde movement yes um as soon as something is formed a new idea uh it eventually well it's it's basically like the entropy of ideas right an idea comes and chaos pursues with that idea it, but it folds it like spreads itself and then it spreads into the masses a lot of people misinterpret it and people disagree with how it's done and then eventually um there's a small group of people that got some loud mouths and they make everyone go crazy basically yeah because isn't entropy the tendency for everything to move toward chaos yes. even in like universal sense or like atoms mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. yeah no that seems accurate and also with ideals it's like as soon as an ideal is created <clears throat> it's almost static and the world is not static. It's like, it's ever yeah. like moving and ever evolving. Mm -hmm. So it's like you, if you create that ideal and then like stay rigid with it, the world has already changed. So as you're trying, yeah. so that's why I feel like it is a re how it becomes a retrograde movement because you're trying to hold on to this ideal, but things have already changed to the point where trying to stick with that ideal would be like unproductive or like, not beneficial i'm trying to think of like a like a very specific situation though from history where like like a seemingly well, i mean communism deal. yeah yeah i guess yeah it's just like Karl marx his idea of communism i mean that that didn't go over too well <laughs> yeah i was trying to think of like an idea that like was more it seemed more universal like something obvious um but I can't think of anything right now. Yeah, like, I mean, like, uh, like I guess, oh, let's accept everyone. Yeah, like, like, yeah, let's, let's accept, accept everyone. everyone. And then over time, you're like, wait a minute, <laughs> maybe right. accepting everyone isn't the answer, <laughs> right? Because <laughs> we kind of have a duty as a society, as a as a people like we have to <laughs> be able to like sort of govern like kick each other some people out extent. yeah like because we can't just be like oh let's accept this person who just yeah. murdered 30 people i mean i guess the definition of it of acceptance can be a little bit yeah i mean that's uh just like a, a random obviously you should accept like most people um and like give them the benefit of the doubt but if they've done something like clearly wrong yeah or they're harming people <laughs> but you know. I, I i guess i used to be like more idealistic in older times yeah me too and and i i almost had like a naive optimism to a certain extent and i think life experience has caused me to have to like not be more realistic, but in a sense, tone down the optimism because a lot of my idealistic views <laughs> got me into trouble. Is but like when I think about like the robbery yeah. and just like, oh, let's give everyone the benefit of the doubt. No one is trying to ever um cross me in a negative way. That that led to me going through like a negative experience. Yeah, so I guess there's definitely some terrible people in this world. I mean, there's just no, I mean, there's no doubt about that. 
It's like but I, real evil. I do believe as a role, though, it's much better to live your life in that way where you do yeah. give people the benefit of the, because it's I agree. what kind of yeah like what kind of world or like mental habitat are you living in if you can't trust a single person around you or even yourself like so well the people who robbed you they probably were the kind of people who don't give people the benefit of the doubt right no that's a good there yeah no yeah but like i guess what i would say is like in my optimism because i try to stay optimistic I just try to there's a way to be like cautiously optimistic is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Where I take into account more factors now before just like blindly going into a situation. I'll say. Well, you got to protect yourself. And yeah. Especially just there's so much we just don't know about what's going to happen in our life and there's so many unexpected events that could unfold so many different people that you could meet but i do agree that it's important to keep an open mind and to not just like fear everyone and fear everything and like think that you know the world is going to hell and yeah it's like unsavable and you're fucked <laughs> Right. And I mean, they, they have shown like psychologically having a more optimistic view on other people does benefit you Yeah, because you treat, it's like the self-fulfilling prophecy thing. You end up treating people in a different way when you give them the benefit of the doubt and then they receive the way that you're approaching them and all of that. And then they end up, they end up treating you better. Versus if you assume the worst, you kind of give off that vibe in a social setting and then they kind of confirm it. Well, that kind of goes back to identity in that if you believe, like your beliefs about the world shape who you are. So if you believe the world is evil, you might yourself become evil as well. It's a, um, it's, not to bring up Nietzsche again, but he said this line in Beyond Good and Evil. He said that, what was it? It's be wary of staring into the abyss too long because it will stare back into you. And then following that, the next sentence, it was be careful fighting monsters because you yourself may just become a monster too. Yeah. That reminds me of such an amazing quote and i wonder if it's it is just the same quote and someone just rephrased it but it's it was just yeah. like when of you're course. fighting mon when you're fighting monsters see to it that you don't become one yourself it's literally the same oh quote, yeah no that's the it. quote <laughs> that's yeah. like a, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah maybe, no that yeah. is the actual quote oh Cause, yes because i was paraphrasing but that is actually how he said it i love that quote because like yeah i mean and just when i'm like watching movies and stuff there's those it's like you're you have a noble cause and you're fighting for your country or something and then someone just ends up becoming cruel like the enemy yeah and it's like well you you lost your like what are you fighting for because mm -hmm. what you're fighting for sort of lost its value as, as soon as you started to stoop to the enemy's level i guess um but i yeah i really love that quote what were we talking about right before that um you said I'm not really shape. sure I, I said something about how your identity is shaped by the way that you perceive reality right which is like I, I guess an important factor is like your identity is based on your perception of the world your beliefs but not the world itself if if that makes sense like since yeah. your identity like so the way you well, choose i guess well yes your identity is shaped on how you perceive the world like i was thinking like the world does affect how like what your identity is but only because 
you perceive because of you perceiving the world yeah like the way you perceive the world is yeah. how your identity can result but the world as it is like as it like objectively is if there is such a thing i would say has less of an effect on you than how you perceive, perceive it. it yeah based on um, like, i would agree with that and but, like okay, i'm not but, sure if that you can like i don't think there is an objective world yeah like there, there the, is but there yeah. isn't yeah and that's that's it's such a like a difficult thing to talk about because like okay for example politically i've noticed <clears throat> the people who are left-leaning they're like on on a, about a lot of that stuff of like oh like what's your truth this is my truth yeah. his truth her truth but then like people on the right will be like there isn't his truth my truth her truth it's like there's the truth and it's so difficult because like i agree with both of them yeah. like in the sense of Same. like there are i don't believe in an objective reality in the sense that it doesn't matter if there is one because no one experiences it really we're all experiencing a subjective reality yeah. everything that is conscious so the objective world doesn't really matter to a certain extent because that's not what how you base your behaviors that's not how you react you react to like what you believe so well i'd but, say the objective reality is just the reality that is like say there was a venn diagram of all seven billion people in the world it's the shit that's in the middle of it yeah exactly it's it's the meeting place is what i like to call yeah. it. objective reality is the meeting place of like everyone's collective subjective reality reality and when you talk about like laws of physics and stuff i just like to say like we're in a game and there's a rule yeah. set like there's a rule set that we sort of agree on when playing the yeah. game like yeah. the rule of gravity and so like just because someone <laughs> subjectively might not believe in gravity if they walk off a cliff they're still gonna fall yeah so like <laughs> there's like a rule set like, that <laughs> good luck with that on. belief <laughs> yeah yeah um well it it's it's interesting to think about that because it's also like okay yeah there's gravity on earth where we live and you know we've done all these tests and we see you know how gravity works we see how the stars move but you know who's to say that it's not different like 500 million light years away from here right well, and another thing is that some a rule or an objective reality on one level of reality can be different on another level. Like, yeah. for example, like, for all intents and purposes, the table that I'm sitting, you, this laptop is on, is, like, sitting still. Yeah. But at another level, like, because the Earth is rotating around the sun at, like, <laughs> thousands of miles or whatever. Yeah. Uh, the table is not still. It's actually moving quite rapidly through space. But relative then, to you. Relative to still. me, yeah. And then also, like, at a subatomic level, like, the table is not actually solid. So, like, on this level, like, to say that this table is solid could be, like, an objective observation. But at another level of reality, it would be false. Yeah, that's... Oh, that's so true. And there's like another thing. It's also like when you bring in like quantum physics and how physics kind of works different on the quantum level. Have you seen Quantum Mania? Like Ant Man Quantum Mania? Yeah, the new one. Yeah. Dude, that was honestly uh like one of the best. Like I hated Ant Man, but that was like one of the best Marvel movies I've seen. Yeah. So trippy. But it's so like it brings up all these concepts of like time and space and like yeah okay. how like on that level things are just so I, much different right like, like it, it's probably not it's yeah. not true how you know it like looks down yeah. there but it's just so it's so strange i don't know like yeah, i don't think they got everything 100 percent correct because we don't know everything about quantum yeah. whatever but i do know that a lot of their descriptions as far as the marvel universe yeah. on that kind of thing are pretty are as accurate, accurate as they can be for 
for what we know because they hired yeah. quant you know quantum theorists or whatever yeah um, and obviously but, they need to make a story about it so it can't just be like totally reality right. <laughs> but i i love quant like movies based on multiverses quantum like Do- doctor strange was yeah. probably my favorite great movie, movie. That, great movie. as far as marvel but then the second one was kind of there was just too much they i think they were trying to explore too many things um, oh the second doctor bought, strange yeah like i liked like it, multiverse but... of madness mm-hmm. oh i love that one man like okay. when he like becomes like the dead like when he possesses the dead body within the other universe i'm like okay dude, the no reason way. why no way. i i was disappointed by it is because i had the i had expectations because i had read that the director of sinister the the horror movie sinister oh, okay or whatever was working on it and i also heard that the villain of the movie was going to be an entity called nightmare that can like okay. go into people and so i was like really excited to see like this this entity this nightmare entity so that's totally not what happened yeah exactly and so <laughs> i was like watching the movie and i'm like what when's nightmare gonna show up (laughs) and so like and so i think it was only because i had this expectation that made me feel disappointed i guess but did you ever watch um um everything everywhere all at once did you watch that no no i haven't seen that yet is it good because like i watched the trailer and i was like yeah i'm not too sure about this movie it's the concept think, sounded cool, but then I watched the trailer and I just wasn't sure. I loved it, and really? I love. I've watched it twice: once in theaters and once with a friend. Okay. And I, I think I liked it even more the second time because it's one of those. I um, I remember the first time I watched it, I, I leaned over and told whoever I was watching it with, I was like, "This is going to become a cult classic." Like, I already like, I already know it is. It just had all of the elements that make a movie great, basically I- iconic. Yeah, um, and it—I yeah. mean, it ended up winning all of those Oscars or whatever nom- mm-hmm. nominations. But I—I I would recommend you watch it. It was—it it was a really good movie. Um, Maybe we'll watch it tonight. Yeah, no, you guys should. Um, I feel like I'm getting more into like a friend friendly conversation now because I was going to tell you that we should. Make a movie reaction thing. That's cool. But I wanted to oh, bring dude. up this this book that I had bought. Oh yeah. Years. Did I ever show Go you this? It. Uh something deeply hidden. No, you haven't. Yeah. That's I, that name sounds familiar though. I feel like I've heard that name. It's uh Sean Carroll. Cause he's like a quantum. Yeah, like a quantum. yeah. Yeah. This guy was he's on, really famous. Uh, on Joe Rogan. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but I, I've there. only, I've only made it thirty pages in, and I do need, I need to finish it. But, um, basically, the premise that he was trying to set forth in just the beginning pages was he said that the rules of physics no longer apply, basically, unless you accept that there are multiple um, parallel realities. Okay. He was, he was, he was saying like the math no longer works unless you except that there's parallel realities or something. And I, I ended up stopping because he was going into the math of it and I didn't want to just like read over it and not understand it and then continue. Like I was yeah. really trying to like understand it. Um, and because I was having a hard time with like the math functions or whatever, I not that you have to like be able to solve them or anything, but yeah. he just kind of lays them out. And I, I realized that my intellect wasn't ready for it yet so it, it's kind of hard to understand like math equations like that just like reading them i mean yeah well not necessarily yeah just the way he was describing like the wave functions yeah. and, the, and the particles i freaking I, wave function dude I yeah hate the wave function <laughs> i i think it's so cool though like because did you ever learn about the observer effect and how like yeah like how consciousness actually i mean and i don't know if this is like well, something uh, I just want to butt in just a little disclaimer on that. Um, like I, I think part of the observer effect is that we have to use 
tools of measurement to observe things. So you have to like hit something with light in order to observe it. So hitting it with light changes it. But right. but with that said, um, I don't think that's like the full story. And I don't think I'm 100% right on that. So go ahead with what you're saying. That's what I was going to say is like a lot of the new age or whatever has kind of gotten away with it and said like, mm. oh, consciousness affects this. But that's not necessarily. I think it probably server. does though. Yeah, no, I, I think it does too. I, but um, I think some people have like taken a conclusion and like run away with it. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, while I think like, it's true that light will affect it, I also, and, and I think that's like what the observe. Honestly, dude, let's ask ChatGPT what the observer effect is. Yeah. Here, I'm going to share my screen. I can tell you like a crazy thing if you want. Oh, wow. oh yeah, definitely tell me the crazy thing. <clears throat> There's this guy named like Dean Radin and a lot of people would consider him woo woo, but he is a scientist at the end of the day. And I bought a book from him many years ago, but he basically studies the observer effect and whether or not mm. consciousness or intention can change the outcome of something observable. And so, for example, he'll he'll have like a random number generating computer. Okay. And he'll put he'll put like an expert meditator, like a Buddhist monk or something, and he'll have that monk focus on a certain number or like a certain result and see if that affects the frequency that that number shows up in a random number generator. And that's just an example. I think he's actually okay. done that exact one. And then he just like measures it. Is there a st statistical significance of intention or something it's pretty interesting i mean i definitely think that your intention can change things um i think it has to i i think it can only do so in like a like small way like most of the time yeah yeah like a small but, like subatomic way almost but it's also like when you're positive or when you have good intentions um uh, you know people are going to notice that and people are going to see that and they're going to respond positively to your positivity. Right. And they're going to give you the benefit of the doubt if you're positive. And, and that kind of goes back to what you were saying earlier about like giving people the benefit of the doubt and having a positive view in the world. Yeah, it does like your intention. And I'm not saying that in a necessarily like mystical way. Yeah. Like I'm saying just like the way your intention affects everything from your behavior to the way you talk and all of that and all well that, even obviously. in a, like a mystical way um just i mean believing that even if it's not true is is cool kind of fun like yeah. it's fun it, it, it it's fun to have yeah. like like ooh, i'm gonna like see if i can do this like with my mind like yeah. you know, like you know what i mean like it's fun and like if you see something happen out of it then you're like like you'd be eccentric dude like, yeah well you know something I mean, weird that I, like a weird experience i had today yeah and it's gonna sound super dumb and small no go for but it but did did you see my snapchat story like the little video with my mom yeah yeah okay <clears throat> did you see the second snap that i had today where i corrected the word your did yeah you see I, I saw that but i don't remember what like when the your was in the like which caption it was referring to. So here's the weird thing is when I went back and looked at my story, it said your as in possessive. And I was like, oh my God, I look like an idiot that doesn't know how to spell you like you are. Yeah. And so that's why I made the second story where yeah. it's spelled correctly. But then I go back 30 minutes later and check the original story and it's spelled the correct way. And I was kind of just like, and then I went back and deleted the second part because I didn't need the second part because I spelled yeah. the first, but I didn't change that. Yeah. And I was like, am I either just, I'm either blind or, and just thought I misspelled it. But I remember specifically looking at it and being like, oh my God, I, yeah. I, and so it was weird. It was almost like, I don't know. It was kind of just weird because it, it's almost like it changed itself, like retroactively. 
Dude, this is like totally like unrelated, but like kind of because like I had a thought related, like, oh, like what if Snapchat like saw that you corrected and just changed it for you? But That's then what I was, I was just like, thinking. I was thinking yeah. that same thing though. Like, what if, they, yeah, because that and because and then they have like the AI, right? Thing they introduced, yeah, that AI bot. So it's like that totally could happen. Like, but I was also thinking, like, and I've been thinking weird. about this a lot lately. It's like with all this AI and with like knowing that the CIA is always like 30 years ahead of us with technology. Um, and like who knows how far ahead like China is, but there could like literally be people walking amongst us who are, are literally robots, who are literally yeah. robots, and we would never know the difference. Right. No, that's so true. But I feel like with China, I don't know what podcast I heard this on, but the able they're the reason they're able to do stuff so efficiently is because they just like don't respect patents like international patents i guess or u.s patents so they yeah just, they just steal ideas they just steal it <laughs> and like re recreate it so i yeah, i'm I only saying that, that I, i'm only saying that because i feel like it's we don't have to worry in the sense that they could be getting ahead of us <laughs> yeah and, like i'm not saying they don't conduct their own studies and have their own innovations i'm just saying no well i was like debating with my friend about like the U.S. is imperialism and how like it's causing all these problems, but he made a good point to me. He told me like, "Greg, I mean, at this point, like, sure, like maybe we shouldn't have been imperialists in the past, but now that we're already imperialists, we if we stop, then the world is fucked." Yeah. Well, you you see like what happens when you just sort of take thousands of soldiers out of a country at once like had recently happened or happened a couple times and it just yeah. causes man and and another thing that someone mentioned this actually my friend had mentioned this to me he said like yeah like the imperialism we've kind of done a lot of shitty things but if you try to look at it as objectively as possible what which country if there would be a country that was to be able to have that the reach that we did in a sense yeah what one would you want it to be be us and 100 percent. like and like it's like well obviously we say us and that could be because of, <laughs> we're conditioned by our society like because we value yeah what america values in a sense yeah but as far as just like human rights and mm -hmm. um and like the quality of living because of yeah like the human rights i guess like the U.S. is probably one of the best countries to have that kind of reach. Agreed. Not that we don't, we're not shady or anything like that. We do a lot of shady things and corrupt politicians and all of that. But well, well um, shit, Kevin. With that note, we'll call this the Fourth of July special. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, if if would you rather U.S. be the imperialist or would you rather North Korea? <laughs> you know, Definitely our us. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. Well, it also like makes us safer if we're the imperialists. Well, it's also like, uh, have you ever seen um, what's it called? It's a uh, Life of Brian. It's that Monty Python movie. It's like a spinoff. I it, it it's a spoof of like uh, it's a spoof of like Jesus and like that time period, basically. I like haven't, Brian I haven't is seen is like mistaken to be a messiah by accident and he gets executed and shit but it, like goes on that story but the, the, there's a scene in the movie where the this group of people is all talking and then they're like complaining about the like the roman government or the roman empire having like taken them over and they're like i hate the roman government it's like and i hate all this irrigation that they're giving us and all this cleaner water and all this uh all the food that we have and et cetera, et cetera. Just listing off, off all these like great things that the Roman em like empire has given them by conquering them. And then they're like, it's like, uh, it's like, yeah, it sucks. Like the imperialism sucks, but when you're being like conquered by a good nation, it's kind of benefits you in a sense. Yeah, it does. Well, and especially 
like there's countries that in a war time situation they will like execute and torture prisoners but mm -hmm. the but we u.s hasn't been well we do actually we i, I would say like yeah maybe i don't know <laughs> that, that, I, I, well i mean that's guantanamo bay right oh that's true right. but isn't that yeah that's prisoners right but yeah still that's i true. guess we don't like go after our own people that's like well, the I'm big thinking, thing like you're right well i'm thinking i'm thinking of like okay during world war ii the japanese concentration camps in the u.s like yeah. i feel like the conditions were probably not the best but we also weren't putting them in ovens you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> so you know what i mean so yeah we're definitely like as far as like a lesser of like yeah five lesser or six e years. different evils right <laughs> yeah exactly anyway let's read what this observer effect says oh yeah what is the observer effect uh, the observer effect also known as the hawthorne effect first is a phenomenon where individuals modify their behavior where they are aware of being observed the term originated from a series of studies conducted as western electric hawthorne works okay so this is the, oh, the psychological this... one yeah it's talking about the psychological um, between um in observer terms of observing molecules in the context of observing molecules refers to the idea that the act of measuring or observing a molecule can protrude its behavior state concept is particularly relevant in the field of quantum mechanics quantum mechanics particles such as molecules can exhibit wave particle duality this means that they can behave both as particles and as waves when a measurement is made on a quantum system, such as observing the position or momentum of a molecule, the act of measurement can cause the system to collapse into a specific state or disturb its original state. This collapse or disturbance is known as the observer effect. Maybe you know, such as observing the, the act of measurement. Okay, the observer effect in quantum mechanics arises from the fundamental nature of quantum systems and the interaction between the observer and the system being observed. The act of measurement involves the exchange of energy and information, which can affect the behavior of the particles being measured. To minimize observer effect in quantum experiments, researchers use techniques such as weak measurements or non-destructive measurements, where the inter interaction with the system is minimized. Okay. Yada, yada, yada. Okay. Sweet. How about as it pertains to the effect of consciousness yeah let's see if it the observation of particles i wonder if it's going to give that one like cop out answer i'm not coded to respond to this or whatever <laughs> the concept of consciousness and affiliation to the and this topic of philosophical debate and speculation in the realm of quantum mechanics some interpretations suggest that consciousness may play a role in the observable effect but it's important to note that this is a highly speculative and controversial idea. One interpretation that incorporates consciousness is the Copenhagen interpretation, which states that the act of observation by a conscious observer caused wave function of a particle to collapse into, an in, into a definite state. According to this view, the observer's consciousness has a direct influence on the outcome of the measurement. Okay. Many... Physicists and scientists favor interpretations that do not involve consciousness as a fundamental factor. <clears throat> that's so because, guys. Was, yeah, because that's because they're materialists. <laughs> but that's okay. damn materialists. Material materialists' lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, well, you got to wake up early in the morning. Yeah, but whatever. I'm probably going to stay up anyway after this. I think so. Tired. Yeah. All right. Well, um, do you have any like closing thoughts on as far as I feel like we talked about a lot identity, beliefs, the government, how your identity affects the government, <laughs> the observer just... effect in there. Quantum mechanics. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, we talked about a lot of random 
shit. Um, I guess I just want to know what you're going to title the video. <laughs> oh, thought, thought surfing number two. Guess I, I might title it like, um, um, like independent, like something with independence in there, just to signify Independence Day. Okay, well, you should if you if you're gonna have me on more, you could just do a little chats with Kevin, like a sub, like a sub. Maybe I will do thought surfing with Kevin again, like like to create like a number sub. Two. It's like a sub series in a sense. As yeah, opposed I, to just being a regular interview, you know. Yeah, I already do that too. I do like uh like I'll do like short videos and then I'll call them thoughts, like thoughts number two, thoughts number three. And I have like a poem. I only have one poem episode, but oh. it's like poem oh. number one. Well but yeah, I'll probably do like thought surfing number two. I'm bored all the time. And <laughs> I do wanna like I do want to start like making content, but I feel like I need, <laughs> I want you as a vessel to help, like, um, motivate help, me in the sense, help in contain the sense your, where, your wisdom. <laughs> well, in the sense of like, if we did something together, it, I would be more motivated to actually get started. Like even something like why I suggested the movie reviews. As yeah, idea, you could, just, I mean, or, or just us reacting to, um, like, a news headline or just something that's going on in the modern time, it would be kind of cool to just have um, a really specific focal point and then just have us talk about that specifically. So something. if you create a YouTube channel and then, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, I, if you just create a YouTube channel, I'd be down to um, just for us to meet up and then just make a we could probably do it over zoom and then yeah we could like react to something if you want and then you can That'd post it cool. on your youtube channel yeah that's true because it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense to just include it in the regular channel but yeah i think i i already created my like youtube account it's called the cheshire <laughs> oh really I made it yet. yeah yeah well i'd be down to do a react like a reaction video on like my like on this i just you know i feel like if you want to get it's like have your own thing going then like i don't want to like steal your spotlight sort of a deal if that makes any sense i guess i i was or not like thinking. like i don't want you to like like i want you to have like to, yeah, if no, you want to have your own thing then yeah. you know it'd be good for you to have like your own thing i guess if that makes yeah. sense well i think maybe i'll just make a separate youtube that's just like if you wanted to do it dude i'm just, down like yeah i'm just down do some, something something reacts like kevin and greg react just something dumb like that and <laughs> yeah we can we can I'm react down. to like there's like I mean, the people that react to like cringe tiktoks or whatever and i think it would be funny for us <laughs> to just like watch different things or like movies or whatever and just like what the fuck yeah. yeah no i'd be totally down i could probably commit to that like once a month at, at least yeah yeah like, i got a bare minimum once a month yeah no that'd be cool i just need um, to start finding creative ways to exist <laughs> <laughs> but you anyway. finished writing your uh, uh your lucid dreaming book Dude, I know. I'm 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 getting back into lucid dreaming right now, actually. Okay. I I insisted on not writing that book while I'm not passionate. So it, it it's important for me to be so that I want my uh passion to bleed through the pages. So <laughs> dude, I'm getting it, back. That's how I gotta do it. Yeah. So I it's so cool back. too. Because uh, Amazon lets you like publish a paperback too, and they'll like, yep. and it's free. It's totally free. Yep. And you can order a copy of your own paperback for like five dollars because they yep. they don't charge you for the, um, 
like the the revenue cost or whatever. Right. I are you still recording? Yeah. But Oh, but you are. here we can stop recording. All right, bye. This Bye. is the end of the episode. <laughs> See you guys.